I'm going to work through the projectile motion section of the 2019 NSC physics paper. The projectile motion question is question 3 and question 1.3 of the multiple choice is also related to projectile motion. Question 1.3 reads, a ball falls from an edge of a table, ignore the effects of air friction, which one of the physical quantities associated with a ball during the fall remains constant and since the force of gravity is the only force acting on this object we know that its momentum is going to continually increase as it speeds up, its kinetic energy will increase as it speeds up and the gravitational potential energy will decrease as it falls which means that the correct answer to question 1.3 is A. Question 3 in the NSC physics paper is always based on vertical projectile motion and question 3 here reads Stone A is thrown vertically upwards with a speed of 10 meters per second from the edge of a roof of a 40 meter high building as shown in the diagram below. Ignore the effects of air friction, take the ground as the reference point. 3.1 define the term free fall and the definition as given in the syllabus it is a motion during which the only force acting is the force of gravity. Question 3.2 reads calculate the maximum height above the ground reached by stone A. Now it's important to remember here that the stone is going to travel upwards and reach some height before turning and coming back down and what is important to remember here is that we can calculate the height that it is thrown to and we must remember that it started out with an initial 40 meters. And so we can perform the calculation based on a simple assumption that when it reaches its maximum height, the velocity of the stone at that point will be zero. This is an assumption that it is safe to make. Obviously the stone will decelerate as it moves upwards, reach its zero velocity and then accelerate downwards. And the final velocity at that top point will be zero. I am going to, for my calculations, show downward as positive and it is advised to indicate this on your answer script. You may use upward as positive, but just indicate which you have chosen. So, since we know what the final velocity of this object will be, we also know that its initial velocity is 10 meters per second. So we can use the equation Vf squared is equal to Vi squared plus 2A or G delta X, or you can also write it as delta Y. Important to remember whenever using an equation to use the equation as it is given in the formula sheet that is provided. Now, as we've said, when it reaches its maximum height, its velocity will be zero. The initial velocity is 10 meters per second but that is upward and I have chosen downward as positive so I must indicate that that is negative 10 and that is squared plus 2 times gravitational acceleration on earth of 9.8 and the displacement is our unknown in this equation which then allows us to solve for the displacement here which we find is 5.10 meters. Now as we stated at the start this is 5.10 meters above the starting point, but what we need to remember is that this was already 40 meters above the ground and they've asked for height above the ground. And so we would end this answer by adding those two together and saying that the height is therefore equal to the initial 40 meters plus the 5.1 meters that it has traveled upward. That then is 45.10 meters. Important that all questions are asked or all answers are expected to two decimal places so we do write it as 5.10 because that is two decimal places. Question 3.3 reads, write down the magnitude and direction of the acceleration of stone A at this maximum height and while the stone is at its maximum height just like the entirety of its motion the only force acting on it is the force of gravity which means that this object is in free fall, or we say it is a projectile, which means that its acceleration 
is 9.8 meters per square second and that is downwards. They've asked for magnitude and direction. They often try to trick you or make you forget that since this object is only acted on by the force of gravity, no matter which direction it is moving in or no matter what the motion is, it is always accelerating downward at 9.8 meters per second per second. Question 3.4 reads, stone B is dropped from rest from the edge of the roof x seconds after stone A was thrown upwards. Stone A passes stone B when the two stones are 29.74 meters above the ground. Calculate the value of x. First thing to realize here is that when the stones are 29.74 meters above the ground, that means that they are 10.26 meters below where they both originally started. Obviously stone A went upwards and stone B is just going directly downward. So there are a number of methods or a number of ways to solve this problem. What I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the amount of time that it has taken for stone A to reach this point and then once I have that amount of time I can calculate the amount of time it takes stone B to fall 10.26 meters and then the difference between those two times would obviously be the difference between when stone A and stone B were released. So I'll do that by starting out with stone A, where I say for stone A, the displacement delta x is equal to the initial velocity multiplied by the time plus one half of gravitational acceleration multiplied by time squared. Again, important to write this formula down and write it down as it is given. Since I have chosen downward as my positive direction, this stone, stone A has traveled 10.26 meters downward, and that is a positive value. 10.26 meters downward is equal to the initial velocity we were told was 10 meters per second upward, still negative because upward is the negative direction, multiplied by the time, one half times gravitational acceleration, which does not change, multiplied by the time squared. This allows me to find that the time it takes for stone A to reach that point 10.26 meters below where it started is 2.79 seconds. I can then perform the same calculation for stone B, where I say for stone B, the displacement once again is equal to the initial velocity multiplied by the time, one half times gravitational acceleration multiplied by time squared. Always rewrite the formula, even if it is used twice in the same question. This stone has also fallen 10.26 meters. The initial velocity, however, since they have stated here that it is dropped from rest, means that the initial velocity is zero plus one half the constant gravitational acceleration multiplied by the time squared. And this allows us to see that it took stone B 1.45 seconds to fall that 10.26 meters. As a result, we can now say that that time x must be the difference between how long it took stone A to reach that point and how long it took stone B to reach that point. So that would then be 2.79 minus 1.45, which says that x must then be 1.34 seconds. Question 3.5 reads, the graphs of position versus time for part of the motion of both stones are shown below. As we can see, this is a position versus time. And the question then goes on to say, which of the labels A to H on the graphs above represents each of the following? So 3.5.1, which of those labels represents the time at which stone A has a positive velocity? Now the unknown here is which direction they have declared as positive, but we remember that the gradient of any graph, gradient of the graph is the change in the y-axis over the change in the x-axis. In this case, that is the change in position over the change in time. Position obviously can also be seen as displacement, and we know that a change in displacement over change in time would mean that the gradient of this graph represents the velocity. And so we can see that when the gradient of this graph is positive, 
that being from zero to point E, that means that this object has a positive velocity. So again, the gradient of this graph between point zero and point E is positive, which represents a positive velocity because the gradient of this graph is the velocity. And so they have asked specifically for which label and the only label that refers correctly to this amount of time here is label D. Question 3.5.2 states uh, which label represents the maximum height reached by stone A and the maximum height is going to be reached when it reaches its maximum position as well and so now we are reading because it is a position we are reading off the y-axis and therefore that is label A. Question 3.5.3 reads which label represents the time when stone B was dropped and as we can see stone B's motion starts at this time and we're reading time so we're reading off the x-axis which means that that is then label F and finally question 3.5.4 which label represents the height at which the stones pass each other. We can see that it is at this point, but they've asked specifically about the height, which refers to the position, so we would read off the y-axis, and that is label C. It's important to remember in vertical projectile motion that one must declare direction as positive and preferably stick to that throughout the calculation. Keeping in mind that anything, whether it is motion, whether it is velocity, whether it is acceleration that acts in that positive direction must be positive and anything in the opposite direction must be negative. Important to remember to give the correct units, your displacement should always be in meters, acceleration in meters per square second, time measured in seconds and wherever possible keep the answers to two decimal places.